North Carolina has another invasive species and state officials with the Department of Agricultural confirm this colorful guy you see behind me. Well, that's this has been spotted in Forsyth County. Now it's called the lanternfly, which are native to Asia, although they may look very pretty. They are actually a very big newsome and they can cause some damage to our ecosystem in our surrounding area. So joining us now to better help us understand the situation, Joy Goforth. She uh, is a state pest regulatory officer. Thanks, Joy, for joining us this morning. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about you. What is this lanternfly and why is it considered an invasive species? So the spotted lanternfly came into Pennsylvania in 2014. And from then till now, it has moved uh, through 12 states. We've been on high alert for this pest because it has moved through Virginia relatively quickly. And the two counties that border uh, North Carolina, Carroll County, and, and just next door, just above our very vulnerable uh, Yadkin Valley wine population, um, the spotted lanternfly had been seen there. So we've been on high alert and watching for this pest. The reason that we're particularly concerned is it feeds on more than 100 species of plants including grapes and apples, stone fruit, lots of landscape plants, roses. So we know how devastating it could be, not just to North Carolina agriculture, but also to North Carolina landscapes. Uh, these insects, not, they're of no harm to humans or pets. However, they, as they feed, they secrete a product called honeydew, which is basically like syrup. Uh, it drips down underneath where they're feeding. It becomes very sticky. It attracts stinging insects. And then it also, um, over time, will grow a product called sooty mold, which is this black mold that kind of covers everything. So for uh, areas where we see high infestations, um, the ground underneath these trees that are infested tend to be turned very black. So for, um, for homeowners, you know, it's not only a, a threat to agriculture, it's a threat to tourism, it's a threat to property values, uh, and it really is a significant nuisance pest. And so and, for many reasons, we're concerned. And so if we're, if they are causing all these problems and you're seeing that sap, sap and whatnot, what should we be looking for to maybe start to spot some of these infestations? Sure. So looking at images of, of all the different life stages right now, they're going from this very colorful fourth instar that's red and black moving into the pictures that you have. Uh, what you're showing now is an egg mass. That's something that you would look for in the winter months. Uh, the insect is now is a, is a leaf hopper, so about the size of your thumb. Some people confuse it maybe with more of like a butterfly look. The pictures that you show where the, the wings are spread out and you can see that red. You don't, we don't always see that. But matter of fact, we rarely see that when the insects are alive. That's more of what they look like when they're dead. Um, so they sit and they, um, they're sort of triangular shaped. That is exactly what you can see that image there. We need everyone looking for that pest. Um, and if they see anything that they believe is spotted lanternfly, to submit it to our reporting mechanism at ncagr.gov backslash SLF. Uh, a rapid response is the, the very best way that we can respond. Um, early detection and rapid response are, are what we're looking for in this pest. Um, the, the population we found in Kernersville has been here for a couple years, so that makes it a little more challenging to treat. But if someone contacts us as soon as they find it and we find it early, we are way ahead of where any other states have been with this pest. And we, in the North Carolina Department of Agriculture generally believes that if all citizens are looking for this pest and they report it, quickly that we will be able to continue to stomp out populations in the state and we'll be far ahead of where other states are. So see it, snap it, report it is our message. And then there's also a, uh, a poolside pest outreach, which this isn't a pest of swimming pools by any means. However, insects are attracted to water. And so citizens might see this in their swimming pool filters, um, as well as our Asian longhorn beetle, which is another invasive species we're watching for. So, uh, so both of those are great ways. They should be looking for the adults. Uh, snap a picture is so much easier for us to identify a pest if we have a picture to go with it and then go to our online reporting tool at ncagr.gov backslash SLF. Well, and you were just talking about the longhorn beetle and we have now those two invasive species that you were talking about. Are there any other uh, plant based pests that we're kind of watching right now that could be a nuisance or could create some damage to some of our plants? 
Sure. So it's really, that is our job is to know what's on the cusp. It's also our job to protect other states from pests that we have that, uh, that they don't want, you know, like Japanese beetle and fire ants and those kind of things as well. But we are always, that's an image of the Asian longhorn beetle. We don't have that yet in North Carolina that we know of, but it is in Charleston, South Carolina. So it's to the north of us and then it's also to the south of us. So we're certainly on high alert for the insect you see there, which is really showy that Asian longhorn beetle uh, is devastating to maple trees. Uh, so we're also on the lookout for that as well. But again, we, we um, are constantly surveying for gypsy moth, which is just to the north of us as well as formerly called gypsy moth, now called spongy moth. So we survey for pests across the state that we believe are our biggest risks. For spotted lanternfly, we have been watching very closely in the Charlotte region. It moves um, the egg masses can move on any flat surface. Most of the infestations have happened because of human assisted movement. So, you know, campers, tractor trailers, uh, tourists, anybody who is in the quarantine area that comes to our state, because who wouldn't want to be here, uh, very well may bring spy the lantern fly with them. And so Charlotte, because of its proximity to highways and because if it's, it's high tourist attractions is certainly an area that we've been watching closely. So having all citizens look for spotted lantern fly for us and report it when they see it is critical to our efforts to be able to respond quickly. All right, that sounds great. We'll keep an eye out for it. So even though they look nice and pretty, they're kind of a pain in the lake, you know what? So yeah. thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, we'll keep an eye out for the pretty bugs. Thank you so much.